calling to order the meeting, the regular meeting of the Greenwood County Council on this Tuesday, March 19, 2019. Mr. Steve Brown is not here tonight. He was in the hospital this weekend and is home now, recovering. And we want to remember him in our prayers. That's why I'm here and he's not. <laughs> and uh, appreciate the opportunity to help out tonight on his behalf. This time, Reverend Melissa Spencer will lead us in an invocation. You will please stand and following the invocation, we will do our pledge to believe us. Let us pray. Grace of God, our Father, at this hour we boldly approach your throne of grace to attain mercy in our time of need. We lift up our chairman, Councilman Brian, of God, ask that you give him a speedy recovery as you touch his body and restore his health totally. We come interceding and giving thanks on behalf of our community, city and council officials, our state and local government, our school districts, firefighters, military personnel, EMS workers, and all those who place their lives on the line to promote a positive and safe environment for all to dwell. Lord, as we come together to discuss the business of this community, may you give us the wisdom that is needed to make sound decisions. As we represent this county, my prayer is that you allow us to be leaders that are honest, righteous, and God-fearing so that our constituents will know that we care about them and their well-being. Help us to engage in meaningful discussions where there are questions, give answers, where there is weakness, give strength, where there is evil, override it with good, where there is chaos, give order, and where there is conflict, grant peace. Continue to remind us that all that we do here today and all that we accomplish is for the pursuit of truth, for the greater glory of you, and for the service of humanity. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Show me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. <laughs> It has been in accordance with the Freedom of Information Act that notices this meeting, date, time, and location, and agenda has been posted outside the main entrance of the Greenwood County Courthouse and the Greenwood County Library. Agendas were distributed to the Index Journal, the local radio stations, and posted on the Greenwood County website calendar. At this time, I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes of our meeting on March 5th, 2019. So moved, Chairman. I have a motion by Mr. Lane, a second by Mrs. Charles. Thank you. We recognize you with your hat on. <laughs> All those in favor? And it so approved. We have a couple of or three presentations to make, special presentations to make tonight. And uh, I'm going to call on Councilman Theo Lane to proceed with a re his proclamation, uh, assisted by Mr. Richard Thompson. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, it's a great honor for me to be able to make a special proclamation tonight. Mr. Rupal Harley, Jr. Rupal, you can keep your seat until we get ready to take a photograph. Um, on behalf of both the Greenwood County Council and the Chamber of Commerce, Recently, some of you may have seen uh, media reports that Rupal won a significant award as Volunteer of the Year, not only for our community, but from the Southeastern Festival and Events Association, which encompasses seven states. Uh, during that uh, uh, conference, uh, Greenwood won, I think, uh, Austin with four, four pinnacle awards as a part of that associated with our Festival of Flowers. So we have with us tonight, if you would please stand for a moment, Richard Thomason is our chairman of the Festival of Flowers Committee, and Lisa Saunders, who is our co-chair, do an excellent job of, of everything they do for us. And we're going to uh, read a special proclamation now here for Mr. Harley. And when I'm done with the proclamation, well, we'll all stand, you, you guys included, and come up front, and I think, Austin, you'll take a photograph for us, if you will, please. So, due to the fact that my uh, failing eyesight is greater than my vanity, I'm going to put on my glasses and rubel. Here's what we have for you tonight. This proclamation given by the Greenwood County Council celebrating Friday, March 22nd, 
as L. Rupel Harley Jr. Day. Whereas L. Rupel Harley Jr. arrived in Greenwood as a two-year-old and has embraced this community as a native Greenwoodian, graduating from Greenwood High School in 1962 and in 1965 earning his license as a funeral director and embalmer. And whereas L. Rupel Harley Jr. was a second generation owner of Harley Funeral Home and Crematory and his family has successfully operated their business here for more than 70 years. Whereas Rupel has dedicated his life, his adult life, to furthering the growth and prosperity of Greenwood, focusing on making it a travel destination. Whereas Rupel was part of the original organization of the South Carolina Festival of Flowers in 1968 and has dedicated countless hours and more than 50 years to its success. Whereas L. Rupel Harley Jr. has exhibited a spirit of service in multiple roles throughout the years as a festival volunteer, an event chair, a member of the festival steering committee, and was the only individual who has chaired the festival five times in the years 1974, 75, 85, 2007, and 2017. Whereas Rupel supported a unique visitor attraction for the 45th festival, a topiary display in Uptown Greenwood that features Harley, a Labrador Retriever dog, whereas Rupel led the 50th anniversary of the South Carolina Festival of Flowers, resulting in the largest economic impact of $5.9 million and an attendance of over 128,000 visitors, which garnered, as I said earlier, five pinnacle awards at the International Festival and Events Association. Whereas Rupel Jr. loves Greenwood and desires to see his community flourish, dedicating his time not only to the festival, but to other local, state, and national organizations. Whereas Rupel was a founding member of the Emerald City Rotary Club, led the Greenwood Chamber of Commerce, Greenwood JCs, and the South Carolina Funeral Directors Association and National Funeral Directors Association. Whereas Rupel was recognized with a gold level award as the best volunteer by the Southeast Festival and Event Association in February 2019. Now therefore, be it resolved that the Greenwood County Council expresses their sincere appreciation to Rupel for his longevity and service to our community by declaring Friday, March 22nd, L. Rupel Harley Jr. Day, and we present this proclamation on the 19th day of March 2009. Absolutely. Come to. And what we're going to do, we'll take a picture, and then Rupal, why don't you say a, say a few words. Okay. And Richard, if you want to brag on him a little more, you at least you can say a few words. <laughs> How do you want to do this? You, can I, you want me to hold it? You hold it? Yeah, Whatever. that's good. Yeah. Camera break. One, two, three. Don't give up all of that. <laughs> I probably could stay here. Rupert, you want to have a word? I'll hold that for you. I'm really shocked that I've got a day in the name of it. As Dale said, I do love Greenwood. And uh, I will never put in the volunteer work that I deserve for what Greenwood has done for me. And I appreciate County Council and these guys, because I don't think I could do a six one. <laughs> I don't think I'll let them. <laughs> Smart well, lady. Rupal, on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce and all citizens of Greenwood, myself especially, I want to thank you for all your hard work and let you know that this is my second year doing it. I'm not doing it five years, <laughs> and you, you're too big of a choose to fill all your uh, hard work uh, in festivals, making it success successful for 52 years in a row. Just, you know, it's, it's volunteer work that no one, I think, can surpass. So thank you so much for what you've done. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Councilman Lane. At this time, Councilman Robbie Templeton will 
will share with us a proclamation recognizing uh, Mr. Gage Savanka. Mr. Stilton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first off, I want to welcome everybody here tonight. Um, we have the honor and privilege of recognizing one of our own. Um, and one of the finest young men you'll ever meet. I know Doug and Scott are extremely proud, as are the rest of the family, as they should be. Um, we've got several folks here who um, are going to uh, say a few words and, and, and make some presentations uh, to Gage. So I'm going to kind of alter uh, a few things here to make it work. But before I start calling people up, um, this, is a great, this is a great honor for me because I get to honor a young person who's, which is well-deserved is a role model to people throughout the community um, and has had such a great impact and has had so much success but it's also great for me because I love Clemson and what better way to what, what, what better what better way for me my council members are giving me a real hard time but that's okay um, you know <laughs> I was talking yeah, I was talking to Gage uh, briefly before we started and and most of you will you know most of you recall that uh, Leading up to the national championship game, everybody talked about the best team ever. And at no point were they mentioning Clemson. It was all about Alabama. And uh, on January 7th, uh, Gage and his brothers left no doubt in a 44-16 uh, uh, beatdown that became and became the first 15-0 team in modern era, so the best ever. And um, the 28-point victory was the 13th by 20 points or more most by any team in the modern in, in, in the turn since the turn of the century and of course everybody knows about you know the national championship uh mvp trevor lawrence or the or the acc player of the year travis at the end what they may not know is that those guys can't do anything without the guys playing in the shadows like these guys right here engage has been a tremendous leader of that o-line group he's a leader on and off the field they're going to look to him this year i know to be a tremendous leader i know he has been I know he's the, um, they say he's the uh, hardest worker in the weight room. I believe it. He's the uh, strongest guy on the team. I may get these numbers wrong, Gage. If I do, just correct me. I'm married. I'm used to getting corrected. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he squats over 600 pounds. He uh, benches over 450. Has that number gone up? Yeah, that's wrong. 520. 520. <laughs> just, just 520. Just 520. Just 520. Um, but, you know, um, and, and he'll appreciate this. Uh, he works his tail off because he knows they don't put championship rings on smooth hands. And if the bar ain't bending, you're just pretending, right? Uh, but my favorite, uh, I got two more things I wanted to say before I start calling people up. My favorite video of Gage, if you haven't seen it, it's hilarious. Most of you know that. Um, when you go to the NFL Combine, you lift 225 pounds, and they always list who can, who can, and bench press, who can lift it the most times. And I want to say it was last year that I think the most was lifted by an offensive lineman was 36, 7, 8, somewhere along in there. So Gage comes out, and they do a video of him, and he does 50 reps. But what made it so great is that rep number 40, he stopped and winked at the camera and then pumped out 10 more. <laughs> so um, I love that. And then the guy that everybody talks about is going to uh, be the first round draft pick this year, Quentin Williams from Alabama. Got put on his tail more times than I can count by that man right there. So number 59 in your program, number one in our hearts here in Greenwood. Thank you. Gates, we're looking forward to it. We're very honored to recognize you. We've got a couple of proclamations and whatnot, but first, before we before we get into that, I'm going to call Coach McMahon up. He wants to say a few words. Coach. <coughs> well, I don't ever say a few words. Forgive me, I'm going to turn to y'all. That's fine. Go right in. I first saw Gage. Uh, he was in the eighth grade, and. He came over, if you Clemson guys uh, fans will, will understand this, I've had the privilege of coaching as head football coach for 24 years, uh, some in North Carolina, some in South Carolina. But I've had two guys that when I saw them within the first five minutes, I went, hmm, that's one. And one of them is Stephon Anthony, who played at Clemson as a linebacker, the number one draft choice of the New Orleans Saints. The other one was Gage Savica. And, uh, 
hopefully it'll turn out the same way and that's down the road but uh, it didn't take long to understand that this guy was a little different than most eighth graders that I've ever come across in ninth grade and true. You talk about strict, well, he was the strongest football player in Emerald all four years as well. So that, that kind of went in hand. I don't know how long he's been strong or how much stronger he's going to get, but uh, it's, it's no doubt that uh, he's strict. But to be compared to Stephon Anthony, and I know I did that, and uh, you remember your college recruiting the people would come in and all these people, but Dave is not the tallest player. And everybody looked at me kind of funny, so I talked to two guys here. One of them is Stephon Anthony, and the other one is Gage Serena. They're that good. And he looked at me and said, now, he's a different athlete, but he's in the top 1% of anybody I've ever seen, strength-wise. And that counts in football. And more importantly is his competitive drive. I've never met anybody who wanted to win that had more competitive drive than Gage Serena, including Stephon. He's one of the great players ever coached. And the best example I can tell you, we told the story, he was up at uh, uh, wrestling in the Upper State Championship, team championship, in his ninth grade year. He's 14 years old. There was an 18-year-old boy from Cheval built like a fire hydrant, literally like a fire hydrant. <laughs> Gage hadn't really been challenged all that much that year. And we were coming in, and we we're kind of chatting, and Gage is wrestling. When Gage wrestling, usually just kind of sit back, relax. Well, as it went on, this old boy had to leave. And it got down just a few seconds left, and everybody's like, oh gosh, she's going to lose. No, he was flat his back against the 18 year old. I believe he was 14 at the time. Somehow, he gets his hips outside, rolled that boy over and pinned him with about four or five seconds to go. And that showed me right there, any young man that can come back from that, they're going to be a You better watch out for what he's going to be able to do. Two other stories, and I'm going to get out of here, because I can talk all night about this young man. But two other stories I think you enjoy. It's not all been smooth for Mr. Gage, okay? His freshman year, we're lucky enough to get into the third round of the playoffs, and we're up playing at Pimpton. And we get about halfway on the bus, and I feel this. It's Gage. Uh, coach, I forgot my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. He started defensive tackle now in the ninth grade. I'm like, well, okay. So, make a long story short, this is how it age works. By the time we got to Pendleton High School, which is about 30 more minutes, he had three pairs of shoes waiting on him. <laughs> the only boy I've ever seen go with none to come home with three. <laughs> I think his parents had a pair. We found a pair he left at home, and my brother came from Morgan, North Carolina, and bought him a pair there because I said, Don't come unless you bring a size 14. <laughs> this young has got to have it. We went on to win that game, and that's a good story. Now, the last story I'm going to tell is going to his senior year, and we're playing somebody else you guys can play some might recognize. We're playing Red High School. Yeah. And they had a quarterback by the name of Kelly Bryant, who was undefeated, had never even been pushed. And I don't think anybody gave us a chance to go in and win that game. Well, we did win the game. But the funniest thing that happened that night is we needed about that far to ice the game. And late in the fourth quarter, we got an interception, and we needed to get a first down, and the game was over. Never forget it. So I called timeout right before the – play clock run down, getting every second off, and all we need is the first down, we're going to upset an undefeated Kelly Brockton, who, by the way, is one of the best athletes I've ever seen as well. But anyway, so the boys get over there, and we got this thing called camera, and we put the 11 best youngers we got in the game, and they're going to go get us a yard. And we had McGage play right behind the quarterback as the fullback. Well, through the year, we've been practicing Give Gage the ball, give Gage the ball, give Gage the ball. But I don't think we ever did that year. He played a little tight end on the ball. So I get over there and I'm like, okay, we're going to run 24. And it's just like who's kids looked at me. All right, we're running 25. And he's looked at me. And Gage said, I'll get that yard. I'll get that yard, coach. All the kids said, yeah, give it to Gage. What are you thinking? Yeah, go, coach. Give it to Gage. He's not the really strongest high school kid in the nation. So we go out there, and I grab Gage, and you remember, I grab I said, son, we need a yard. We don't need 40. <laughs> when you get that yard, and you know you got it, you go down. Because they're going to try to take the ball. And we don't want Kelly Bryant to get the ball back. I got you, coach. I got you, coach. So we get the game. We hand the ball off to him. He runs up in there, and he pushes the entire real team down the field. And they just keep going. And the crowd's cheering. I'm like, no, go, go, son. And he keeps going. And I'm telling you, 10 yards, 
15 yards. That's becoming comical, but I ain't laughing. Everybody else is laughing. I ain't laughing. Finally, the gauge goes down after about 30 yards. And he comes over. I said, I thought you was going down. He said, Coach, they wouldn't let me go down. I said, Holy crap. <laughs> too much driving, that young man. But well, that's been a pleasure. I hope I haven't taken too much time. I see the Emerald logo up there. We went on to have a finer son to represent Emerald High School and Greenwood. The guys submit of all luck in the world. Thank you. Chairman, if I may, I need to apologize to my fellow council members and Councilman Templeton and our guest here tonight. I have absolutely no idea what Rupal bench press is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and just and just to keep uh, just to keep every, trying to keep it moving, um, I'm going to skip to um, the chamber has a something they want to present. I think Lisa's going to Lisa somebody. So Gage, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and come up front because we're going to do the chamber, then we're going to do uh, the Greenwood City and County Joint Resolution. I'm going to ask Brandon Smith to come up as well, and we'll keep you in one spot Perfect. for a few things. How about that? Perfect. Well, he can stand anywhere he wants. Tell me where he wants to stand. Gage, we just want to present you with this Tiger Topiary picture to tell you how proud we are, and thank you for being awesome. such a good ambassador to Greenwood. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you, Paul. You Thank you so much. Yeah. Congratulations and good luck in your career. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, James. Stay right there. Or give that to Mom. Brandon, Mr. Mayor. All right. I'm going to let you do the honors because i got to read the next one. Yeah. All right. Good. Well, again, I, I'm, I think I mentioned this. I'm a little bit, my boys are a little bit upset with me because I didn't tell them they could wear orange here tonight. I told them to, to look nice, so I'm in a little bit of trouble. But uh, it's, it's great to have this crowd. I, uh, I want you to know as a young person, I, I hope you understand really how much of an honor it is to be recognized alongside Mr. Rupert Hartley here tonight. It's a very special honor. I, um, the day after the national championship game, I called the Clemson uh, Athletic Department. I, I don't even know what I was thinking. <laughs> I, I knew, I didn't think I would get a call back, but I was so excited. I said, we got to do something. I don't know what it's going to be, but I called up there. And of course, you got to jump through a lot of uh, hoops, a lot of red, red yep. tape with compliance, yes, but everybody was real nice. And we said we wanted to, to do something to honor you. And as a, as, a, um, as a Clemson fan, and we would certainly recognize any Carolina fan, uh, Carolina players who excel too. I hope you understand you're following in the footsteps of uh, some great athletes and football players from, from Greenwood. So as, a, as an Emerald uh, alumni myself, it's an honor to, to award you this. And so I'll go ahead and read it. This is a joint proclamation recognizing the accomplishments of Gage Cervenka. Whereas Gage Cervenka is a native of Greenwood County, South Carolina, born June 22, 1997, and the son of Scott and Dottie Cervenka. And whereas prior to his college career, Gage Cervenka was the first four-time heavyweight state wrestling champion in South Carolina history. And whereas in high school, Gage Cervenka was recognized as the number 12 football player in South Carolina, number 26 defensive tackle in the nation, and was first team all state. And whereas Gage Cervenka graduated from Emerald High School in 2015, and received a full scholarship to Clemson University to play football. And whereas Gage Cervenka committed to Clemson University in April 2014 after being offered scholarships from Duke University, University of Miami, NC State, University of Toledo, Old Dominion University, Virginia Tech, and Wake Forest University. And whereas Gage Cervenka was redshirted in 2015 and made his first collegiate debut at South Carolina State in 2016 and made his first career start at Florida State University in 2018. And whereas Gage Cervenka was recognized by a Clemson University football team with awards for most improved offensive player, NSCA strength and conditioning All-American, Hustle Award offense, and the True Tiger Award. 
Whereas Gage Cervinka continues to strive for the best in athletics and academics as a graduate student at Clemson University. He first graduated in less than four years with a degree in criminal justice and is currently working on his second degree in sociology with a minor in athletic leadership development. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Greenwood County Council and the City of Greenwood do hereby deem it an honor as well as a privilege to extend congratulatory accolades to Mr. Gade Cervinka. Mr. Cervinka is an excellent representation of an outstanding and excelling Greenwood native who will continue to impact our community and outreach to others on his road to success. Greenwood County Council and the City of Greenwood do hereby declare Tuesday, March 19th, Gage Cervinka Day, and present this proclamation on this, the 19th day of March 2019. We've got one more thing, and again, it, it, on top of all that, I failed to mention how it's an honor to recognize Gage uh, as the son of a city employee for this many years. We have the key to the city of Greenwood. Yes. 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 You always wanted to keep. <laughs> All right, we got one more. Um, uh, uh, Senator um, Floyd Nicholson and Mike Gambrell wanted to be here tonight, but they could not be. And they had this uh, a Senate resolution passed for you uh, just last week. And I will read that, although there is one word in here that really trips me up. Why they use it, I don't know. I'll do the best I can. You'll know it when you hear it. <laughs> <laughs> a state resolution to recognize and honor Clemson offensive lineman Gage Trevanka for an outstanding season in Clemson football and to wish him continued success in the 2019 season. Whereas the members of the South Carolina Senate commend the significant role that Clemson offensive lineman <coughs> Gage Trevanka, number 59, has brought to the Tigers offense for the last three years and whereas born on June 22, 1997, he was rated among the top 15 players in the state by all services at the end of his career at Emerald High School in Greenwood. ESPN rated him the number eight player in South Carolina. Scout.com and 247sports.com both rated him number 12 and Rivals.com put him at number 14. And whereas after amassing 100 career tackles and 28 tackles for loss as a junior, Mr. Savanka led his high school to a 10 and four record into the state playoffs. As a senior was named first team all state. ESPN rated him the number 26 defensive tackle in the nation. And whereas one of the top high school wrestlers in the state, he is the only four-time heavyweight state champion in South Carolina history and posted a career 199 and one record for his only loss in his freshman year. Whereas recruited by Dan Brooks and Mike Reed, Mr. Savanka was redshirted as a defensive tackle in 2015 before switching to the offensive line in August of 2016 where he played six games. He served as a backup center during the entire 2017 season, playing 10 games and then earned a starting role at guard in one spot <clears throat> One start at center in 2018 uh, to play 15 games. And whereas standing six foot three inches tall, you look taller than that. <laughs> um, at 325 pounds, you don't look that big. <laughs> uh, he is one of the strongest members of the Tigers team and ties the program record for bench press reps. Uh, and this is wrong because I saw him do 50, 43 at 225. <laughs> and uh, comes to the 2019 season having played 711 snaps over 31 career games, eight of them as a starter. And whereas Mr. Savanka earned Offensive Player of the Game honors in his first career start when he played against Florida State <laughs> <laughs> to help hand the Seminoles their worst home loss in program history. And whereas in his senior year at Clemson where he is majoring, um, he played 33 snaps in the ACC championship win over Pittsburgh, 46 as Clemson passed for 327 yards and rushed for 211 against number three ranked Notre Dame in the Cotton Bowl and 36 in the 2018-19 National Championship victory over then number one Alabama. Whereas the South Carolina Senate values the pride and recognition that outstanding players on the Clemson University football team like Gage Trevanka have brought to the Palmetto State as national champions <clears throat> and the members look to hear of his 
indefatigable accomplishments in <laughs> days to come. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Senate that the members of the South Carolina State recognize uh, in honor of Clemson offensive lineman Gates Urbanka for an outstanding season in Clemson football and wish him continued success in the 2019 season. Uh, be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution will be presented to Gates Urbanka. Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And if you'd like to say a few words, now's your time. Yeah. Um, thank y'all so much for all uh, me. Uh, this is wonderful. I can't thank y'all enough. Um, keep it short and sweet. I'd just like to thank my parents, my family, everybody that has kind of helped me through the ways, um, coaches, everybody who's kind of um, made sacrifices to me through this whole time because I know there's been long days of going from school to practice, even back from break days when y'all were working, how to take me all the way to the Civic Center for some games or traveling all these different ways, taking me to camps and recruiting business and things like that. So I just want to thank y'all so much. I wouldn't be who I am today if it wasn't for y'all. Chairman, before I turn it back over to you, I was just uh, whispering this to Gage, and I, I know his, um, I know that his mom, Dottie, and I have been talking about this, but probably sometime in the middle of um, April, you will, uh, you should see a billboard on uh, on the bypass with that young man's face on it. So. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Templeton. At this time, we will have a presentation. And I'll ask Mr. Robert Benefield and Anita Baylor to please come forward. Mr. Benefield will be presenting an award to Ms. Baylor, who will receive it on behalf of the county. Mr. Chairman, County Council, Mr. Chapel, it's truly an honor to be here tonight with you. The Association of Counties runs two insurance trusts. One is liability and one is property. Greenwood County has been a member of our trust for a long time. And I'm proud to be here tonight to continue the excellence and awards and celebration you guys have started tonight. By acknowledging your risk management efforts, saving both lives of people and saving your county and your taxpayers a lot of money. The first award I'd like to present to you guys deals with the amount of time it takes to report an accident or property damage to the Association of County's Property Liability Trust, which you are a member. The sooner it gets to us, the quicker we can get on it, get your stuff fixed, and get you guys what you need to keep going as a county. So, of our 18 counties in our liability trust, you have the fastest reporting time of any county in South Carolina. That's quite an achievement. When anything happens in your county, it gets to us in two days or less, and that goes a long ways to the efforts of Ms. Anita Bailey here and what she's been doing on the liability trust. So I want to acknowledge that award for you guys. The other award is even more interesting. Every year, we, we analyze our county's workers' comp claims, and there's something called a modified, modified factor. If you have a one, you're average. If you have more than one, your county pays more than it should. If you have less than one, you pay less than it should. Of our 41 counties in South Carolina, you had the second best modified factor in South Carolina. Your factor was 0.55, which means due to your risk management efforts to support a county council, support of your county administrator, all the departments in your county and your people, your county saved 55% off of their premium. That was a savings of over $300,000 to your county and your tax pay. There is no way any individual person can be successful at this without being a team. So I want to thank all you all for your support of what Anita has done this year. This has been a three-year table to get here. Please keep up the good work. You're protecting your people and the assets of your county. So thank you very much for what you guys do. Thank you. Well, they're taking pictures, but may thank Mrs. Taylor. Baylor for her work. You are appreciated, ma'am. Thank you so much for all the you do for Greenwood County. Thank you, Mr. Benefield, for being with us. Thank you for the opportunity to serve Greenwood County. Thank you. 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 Thank
We will offer the third reading of Ordinance 2019-03, establishing the appointment duties and responsibilities of the County Fire Chief. This modifies Section 4 dash, excuse me, Section 7-4-2 of the Greenwood County Code and other matters related thereto. This is the third and final reading. Council, what is your pleasure? So moved, Chairman. Second, sir. I have a motion, Mr. Lane, second by Ms. Childs. Any other comments? All in favor? And it is so ordered. Second item under old business is second reading. There will be no public hearing. This is the second reading uh, for ordinance 2019-04 authorizing the execution and delivery of a fee in lieu of ad valorem taxes and special source revenue credit agreement by and between Greenwood County and Project GS1 to provide for payment of a fee in lieu of taxes, authorizing the inclusion of a project site in a multi-county business park and authorizing certain special source revenue credits and other related matters. This is second reading. What is the pleasure of council? So moved. I have a motion by Mr. Allison, second by Ms. Spencer. Any other comments? All in favor? Those opposed? And it is so ordered. Another item under, set, under old business second reading for ordinance 2019-05 of the Greenwood County, South Carolina, authorizing the conversion of certain fee in lieu of tax arrangements between the county and turbine component services Greenwood LLC as a successor in interest to Walbar Inc represented by that certain lease purchase agreement between the county and turbine component as successor in interest to Walbar Inc., effective as of December 31, 2001, as amended to a simplified <coughs> fee, fee in lieu of tax arrangement, by entering into a fee in lieu of tax agreement transferring the party subject to the lease agreement to turbine component and terminating the lease agreement and related agreements. I feel like I'm infatigable after that. Indefatigable. Indefatigable. Well, thank you. I got tutored by Adam. It's good. And, and Elizabeth, so we're good. Elizabeth, do you want to ex <laughs> expand on that at yes, all? <laughs> yes, sir. Um, Y'all recall this agreement transfers, this is dealing with um, UTC Aerospace, this agreement will transfer their fee load from the old style fee load where the property had to be owned by the county to a simplified new fee. It does not change the terms of their fee agreement in any way. It simply modifies the way that they receive the incentive right okay you've heard the explanation council what's your pleasure so i move chairman second motion by mr lane second by mr templeton any comments any further questions all in agreement and it is so ordered the other item under old business the first reading places in the record the first reading of ordinance 2019-06 establishing the soil erosion and sedimentation control in the lake impact area this is title only and requires no action under new business we have a resolution 2019-08 designating April 2019 as Fair Housing Month. You've heard the explanation from Mr. Smith and Ms. Hallman. Uh, I need a motion to declare April 2019 as Fair Housing Month. So moved, Mr. Chair. So Thank moved. You. Thank you very much, Ms. Childs, Ms. Spencer. All in favor? And that is so ordered. 
We have another resolution under new business. Resolution 2019-09 to appropriate funds for the purchase of Backwater Road. Do I have a motion that we appropriate funds for that purpose? So moved, Chair. A motion and a second? Second. Second by Mr. Templeton, motion by Mr. Lane. Any other comments? All those in favor? Those opposed? And that is so ordered. And finally, under new business, approval of the Greenwood County 2019-2020 CTC road paving list. We received that list uh, from Mr. Templeton, Mr. Rhett Templeton at our admin meeting. You know the roads involved. Is there a motion that we approve? So moved, Mr. Chair. Second. Motion by Ms. Child, second by Mr. Templeton. All those in favor? And that is so important. I have no pending items. And we will move directly to district reports. <clears throat> Ms. Child. Uh, first of all, I'd like to send special thanks out to Derek McKinney, the EMS director, director, Steve Holm, our fire coordinator, for taking the time out to uh, on the their business schedule to have me tour the where shows Blue Fire Department and also uh, to see where they came from to where they're going and thank them so much for that. And I would also like to say uh, thank you for what we're going to do on the south end of town. I've only been waiting 20 years for it, so uh, now I've got it, almost. I just want to say thank you. We've been waiting for a fire department on the south end of town for 20 years, two months, and 19 days. <laughs> so I'm grateful, Ma's grateful. So we're gonna have our fire department that's gonna cover Bradley, Promisland, Troy, and Callis. And that's coming, and I'm excited about that. And those folk down on that south end are excited too. Thank you all so much for just thinking about us. Took you long enough, but it's okay. <laughs> Better to do it than not do it, so I'm grateful. Thank you. That ends my report. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Allison? Hey, Mr. Chairman. As I mentioned in our administration and finance meeting, I'm a board member, uh, was appointed by the chairman to the board of the farmers, Greenwood County Farmers Market. Uh, it's right around the corner that our growers, our local growers, will start selling their produce at our market uh, out off of Highway 72. And uh, the board has asked that the county could contribute to the purchase of some uh, bags, produce bags, uh, paper produce bags, in the amount of a one-time contribution to the market of $1,000. So I would like to present that to my colleagues on council to see if Mr. Chapel can find us a thousand dollars to buy some bags with. You make that in form of a motion, Mr. Allison? Yes, Mr. Chairman, it is a motion. Is there a second? A second. All right. Any questions? Any comments? All those on council supporting this request, please raise your hand. It's unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's the end of my report. Thank you, Mr. Allison. Appreciate it. Ms. Spencer? I've had the opportunity to meet with some of my constituents, sit down and have some fellowship time with them. Also, we um, yeah, there's some activity over at Brewer for a new walking trail, which will give nobody an excuse to go and exercise on their lunch break. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to that so I can um, have the opportunity to go out there and spend some time on it. That ends my report. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Thank you. I've heard me talk enough tonight, Mr. Chairman. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Lane? Uh, yes, Chairman, thank you. Uh, I want to mention, and, and, and Ms. Giles, just so you don't feel alone, uh, the Ware Shoals Fire Department, you know, is, is actually fully functional now. We could be in it, but I'm going to talk about our, our grand opening here in just a moment. But if I'm not mistaken, I believe somebody told me that in one of the first terms of former council member Bob Jennings, that that was proposed, went through Bob's terms, went through council, former councilman Bob Fisher's term, and now I guess it's culminating with my first term. So I don't know how many years that is, but it's probably about 
14 or 16 maybe. Well, so so to that to that point, are you I, taking credit? I want I certainly am. <laughs> <laughs> to that point, I, I want to cordially invite everyone to the grand opening of the new Ware Shoals Fire Station that will take place on Sunday, March 31st at 3 p.m. Um, it's, it's been a long time coming. Thank you, Steve and Derek, for all your work. I know Steve was out there shoveling dirt a couple of Friday nights ago, and, and I think he called me to tell me to try to shame me into coming shovel dirt with him, but I was otherwise occupied. But again, it's been a long time coming. As I said, uh, it's fully functional now. We could be working from it now, but I think uh, my, what I heard from the chief was we're gonna wait until, I guess, the grand opening, but very excited about that. That ends my report, Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Lane. Uh, all's well in District 4. And uh, we, before we adjourn, please continue to remember Mr. Brown in your prayers that he will have a full and speedy recovery and can return to this seat, which he so admirably fills uh, month after month. Uh, he needs our prayers, and we need to practice and pray it. And uh, with nothing else, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman, I'll offer you that motion. Before I do, I just want to say that we had a, um, a very interesting 3 o'clock meeting, and we have full agenda tonight, and you have done an admirable job filling in. <laughs> and well, I wanted to let you know that. So thank you for the job that you do, and I will offer you that motion that we adjourn. Right. We have a motion, and all those in favor of adjourning, hit the road. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. We didn't do your report, Mr. Manager. <laughs> I've heard so much report tonight. I don't know if I can take it. Thank you.